Subscribe to our YouTube channel and don't forget to press the bell icon to get all the latest updates. Our journey across India literally traveling with the pandemic has brought us back to the national capital my city Delhi. And it is a city where I have personally been reading and reporting some disturbing accounts. A family that went to six different hospitals could not get a bed. A 68-year-old man died. The Chief Minister of Delhi has now announced that he will be going in for a COVID test tomorrow, and he has put placed himself in self-isolation after he was feeling unwell. The Chief Minister has also warned hospitals, and there seems to be some sort of collision course between the Delhi government and hospitals. Can we afford? these fissures in the national capital at this moment is delhi beginning to show signs worrying signs that mirror mumbai i say this is someone who's just spent a week in mumbai and discovered that it isn't beds that are in short supply in mumbai but actually doctors actually nurses and actually ward staff and the problem lies very much somewhere else from how the mainstream media has been reporting it to talk about all of this we're joined by raghav chadda senior uh, leader of the aam aadmi party representative of the delhi government dr amrish satwik of the gangaram hospital now remember that the gangaram hospital uh, uh, wanted uh, to the freedom to be able to test anyone they wanted to but the delhi government believes that asymptomatic patients need not be tested at a crunch time like this and professor rama baru who's of course a public health uh, and uh, uh, advocacy expert raghav i want to start by asking you one uh, how is the chief minister and what made him decide uh, to go into self isolation uh, well at this point in time uh, he is in some symptoms of uh, covid 19 he's got fever and he's got a sore throat and he's scheduled to get himself tested um, tomorrow uh, he has been at the forefront of this fight against covid i mean he himself as a corona warrior has been leading from the front and as somebody who has been working very closely with him on this particular project also i can tell you that he has been tirelessly working uh, and perhaps has spent several sleepless nights just trying to ensure that the situation in delhi is under control and uh, uh, we reduce the number of uh, deaths Uh, that have happened in delhi that's one number two uh, the arvind kejriwal that all of us have known over the years the arvind kejriwal that you have interviewed over the last so many years is a fighter he's a warrior and i am most certain that with the with prayers of a billion people he will uh, recover very very soon and uh, we all know that he has a diabetic condition as well that is a known comorbidity uh, that he suffers from so i'm just praying to god that even if his test comes positive tomorrow he recovers very 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 soon well of course all our good wishes with the chief minister and it's important to flag that 80% or more than 80% of people do recover uh, from corona virus and in some ways we need to be talking about fatalities rather than testing positive testing positive has almost become a stigmatized phrase much like it used to be with hiv and we need to move beyond those conversations but raghav i now have to ask you the difficult question uh, while all our good wishes are with arvind kejriwal why this decision uh, to not test asymptomatic people i know it's confusing it's confusing because we have limited resources we have limited kits uh, but surely uh, a doctor and a hospital should be able to have the freedom to determine who they want to test and when and why so first of all uh, this isn't a difficult question your first question was much more difficult for me to answer because i'm personally agreed uh, as far as your second question goes yes uh, a, a new set of guidelines were issued by the icmr a nine point guideline which essentially said that these are the nine set of people that need to be tested we have merely copy pasted those guidelines and issued a circular uh, which has resulted in uh, perhaps this perception uh, i would say an untrue baseless perception that we have we are trying to control the number of tests that are happening in delhi as we speak there are uh, more than 36 private laboratories that are testing we've got flu clinics and hospitals yes. that are testing yes. we've got covid testing centers that are testing a uh, day before the honorable chief minister addressed a press conference where he said that uh, more than 5300 people got themselves tested on that very day so the number of tests uh, has been increasing uh, there is no need for anyone to even conceive this idea that we are trying to limit the number of tests and it is of course 
some priority, of course, is being given to a certain set of people. As we all know, that the capacities of we as a country in terms of testing is limited, and therefore some precedence needs to be given to those who have, a, a, you know, a, a condition who have to undergo some sort of, uh, you know, a surgery or a non-elective procedure, and those who have symptoms. uh and and that is precisely what is being done on the on the advice of the icmr across the country and if at all we were to we were to imagine that something like this is happening in delhi why would our infection rate be so high why would our number of cases be so high and we in delhi have have suffered a, a double whammy you know we, we were uh, we the, the busiest airport of the country is in delhi a lot of foreign travelers as well as indians who were overseas visited delhi and you know some of them were infected when they got in, the, in into delhi uh, over and above that we had a second setback uh, when the markers incident happened which had its epicenter in delhi so i mean i i do concede that the infection rate in delhi is high and uh, as far as testing goes there is absolutely no limitations no limits that have been set on that and lastly in conclusion let me say this that if you were to compare the per million testing rate of delhi with any other state in the country you will come to the conclusion that we are the highest in the country the rate is 12 and a half thousand per million 12 and a half thousand tests per million where the national average is 2 and a half thousand per million so you can imagine we are almost five times the national average so i don't think anyone can accuse us of uh, you know limiting the number of tests and if anyone has Uh, sort of build that perception then i would say it's an erroneous perception and we okay. will certainly work towards ensuring that that perception goes away okay dr satvik are you a little more reassured uh, after hearing uh, raghav and actually i have to add my own lay person's conflict here and the conflict is this i totally think that as a medical expert you uh, and a hospital has to have the space to decide who you want to test uh, but i also think that as the country unlocks it's virtually impossible uh, to know who who among asymptomatic people may be vectors we are trying to go back to a normal life uh, and uh, in the process of doing that uh, a lot of people could be unwitting carriers of this virus without feeling anything about it now since we do not have the resources for mass testing unless we start looking at you know something simpler filtering mechanisms like fever screening oximeters x rays is it realistic uh, uh, for asking asymptomatic people to be tested and are you more reassured after what you've just heard raghav chadda say uh thank you uh first of all i'd like to offer my best wishes to the chief minister and i wish him strength and fortitude in an early recovery and i wish uh, uh, the honorable legislator would convey that to the chief minister and thank you i mean uh, uh you know uh i i'm 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 in no doubt that the government is very sincerely working towards ramping up testing and ramping up capacity but the perception seems to be that there's a systematic disincentivizing of testing and oh. uh, my sense is that the the irrationality of that is quite staggering now no where for a moment am i saying that there should be a population based screening i'm not saying that you know you should randomly stop people on the street and start testing them asymptomatic patients mm-hmm. uh, but what i'm trying to say and and my submission was very specific uh, what happens in the community is to be decided by epidemiologists and perhaps icmr guidelines would be Uh, of some importance there though i'm not entirely sure if the icmr guidelines are statutory in nature i don't know the legal mm-hmm. status of these guidelines but what i'm trying to say is that now that we're in uh, phase 3 in the phase of community transmission and when patients have been moved into hospitals when we are dealing in the realm of therapeutic medicine inside of hospitals i don't think there should be any interference in who should be tested and who shouldn't be tested because anyone who's sick enough to be admitted in a hospital in the middle of a pandemic uh, we have to be absolutely certain where to keep this patient and where to treat mm-hmm. this patient mm-hmm. so again you know don't get me wrong i'm not for a moment suggesting that you should go out to the streets and start testing people randomly yeah in fact from what i've heard that even asymptomatic contacts of lab confirmed cases in delhi right now are having difficulty in getting themselves tested okay right. this is in the icmr guidelines right. so if the delhi government is adhering to icmr guidelines then asymptomatic 
contracts and lab confirmed cases should be tested. But there again, I'm saying that that's fine. You consult epidemiologists there. If you wish to quarantine asymptomatic okay. people anyway. Yeah, Raghav, yeah, give me a second. Uh, yeah. oh. Sorry, Raghav, yeah, if you wish to reject, but I'll let you complete your point, Ambish. Yeah. yeah, I'm saying that if you wish to quarantine people, contacts of uh, lab confirmed cases and they're asymptomatic, that's fine. You needn't test them. And, and that there could be a valid reason there. My only mm -hmm. submission is when you've moved into therapeutic medicine inside of hospitals, please give us the discretion to test whom we want. Thank you. Raghav, I think, uh, sorry, Rama, I'll come to you just in a moment. I just want Raghav to respond to this. See, Raghav, politicians are not doctors. Doctors are not journalists. Journalists are not nurses. We all have a core skill. I think the point that Amrish is making is let doctors on the spot decide what they need to do with somebody who has come into hospitals. And I know hospitals have a lot to answer for, and I'm going to get into that in a moment from now. There are also, there's also another side of people running from hospital to hospital, and we'll discuss that too. But when a doctor thinks that she or he wants to test a patient, Raghav, why should the Delhi government or be interfering in that process? Why should you be threatening a license suspension of a hospital like Gangara? Uh, number one, the Disaster Management Act is in effect. Right. Uh, the ICMR every now and then comes out with guidelines which every state government of this country adopts. Whether they're statutory in nature or whether they're recommendatory in nature is a separate thing. If we mm. comply with the ICMR guidelines, then we're accused of not using our discretion. If we do not comply with the ICMR guidelines, we are accused of playing politics and not complying with ICMR simply because ICMR falls under the uh, BJP-led administration. So I think you can't have it both ways. We have been working very closely with the ICMR. ICMR is not run by politicians. It's not run by journalists. It's run by professionals. And I'm mm -hmm. given to understand epidemiologists and 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 professionals, um, uh, uh, you know, luminaries are part of the ICMR setup and and committees that. Uh, through which these guidelines go through. So I think if a, a, a piece of paper has been published by ICMR, has been dispatched to every state, it is the duty of every state, in particularly in, an, in a pandemic situation like this, when the Disaster Management Act is in effect, to comply. Now, if you were to compare, and I would urge you to do this, Barkha, just pick up the two pieces of paper, the circular issued by the uh, Delhi government vis-a-vis -vis testing and the ICMR guidelines uh, issued vis-a-vis -vis testing. You will find that the government of Delhi has copy pasted those nine points from the ICMR circular without changing a single word, without inserting a comma, removing a full stop and published it as its own circular. I mean, these are extraordinary times when we do not work closely with the central government. You say that you're, you're politicizing, you're at longer head, even in this pandemic. When we do work with them, you are say, accusing us of not using our okay. uh, discretion. Okay. And anyone, let me say this for the last time on record, that for anyone who is sick, who is not keeping well, who is in a hospital, he should be tested, he will be tested. There is nobody who is stopping him from getting tested. So this, okay. per, this, this, this perception that we've built that he cannot be tested is an erroneous perception. Okay, uh, let me get Rama Baru first uh, in on this. Rama, what concerns you? See, here's my simple reading of the situation. I think governments everywhere are trying to avoid a panic response because we've gone into the easing of the lockdown. I think because we are so paranoid, uh, I don't know rightly or wrongly about someone testing positive, if there is a spike in numbers, and there will be a spike, in, the more you test, the more infection you're going to find. I think there seems to be uh, an attempt to control, whether by state governments in Delhi or by governments elsewhere, a kind of societal panic response. There's also a limitation of resources. There is an acute shortage of health workers. In this situation, do you think that the ICMR and therefore the Delhi government is correct in saying that ideally, let's just check only the symptomatic or someone who is showing signs of illness. I just want us to step a little bit uh, before the lockdown. Mm -hmm. You see, and during the lockdown. The reason I'm saying this is that this process of a consultative dialogic relationship between mm -hmm. the center and state has not been there. I really want to say this very emphatically because when Raghav Chadda says that ICMR has given guidelines and we have copied it and we have issued a circular, he is right as a politician. But let me tell you, this: the ICMR is not the last word. Don't forget that this is an uncertain, it's uncertain science. You are acting on and changing protocols as you are seeing the pandemic unfold. 
Mm -hmm. And in this case, what really happened is, if you go back um, uh, into early April, there was a debate within the scientific community as to what kind of a approach the government should take on testing. We were not prepared. Let's be very clear, uh, Bharka. If it is such a national emergency, we should have put our money into the areas which we knew would be mm -hmm. important. Testing is absolutely important. And therefore, I agree with Dr. Sattvik when he says, we are not asking for screening of every individual who is walking on the streets. But there is a strategy you could have adopted for testing, which I don't think we were prepared for. And I'm sorry to say the panic and fear was created by the prime minister of this country, no less than this prime minister of this country, when at the time of lockdown, he just went into this great spiel about how you should be afraid there is this corona that is coming. And where did you do to prepare systems? The question I have for Raghav is, why shouldn't the state government of Delhi have created a multidisciplinary team with experts in public health, in epidemiology, why do you have to only listen to the ICMR? It is not right. statutorily binding. Kerala did it. Kerala uh, had different levels of expertise right from the state down to the block level. Why mm -hmm. couldn't Delhi have uh, created such a model? So I why should fair. we then, then yeah. you know, why can't you, you had all the expertise in this city. You could have pulled together a group who were sympathetic to ARP and to have these concerns. You have had a good record of building secondary level hospitals. So, you know, this, this argument that somehow, you know, this is the, the NDMA, the NDMA has played both ways. The center has completely abdicated its responsibility to the states. Today, Man. everything is a state's responsibility. So tomorrow okay. when you go into the fiscal red, you will have the same problem, right? No. Nobody is bailing you out. Okay, let me I get just want to, Sorry, I just want to respond to what Satvik said, and it's very important what he said. There is something called clinical freedom and professional freedom. Yeah. Now you cannot bureaucratize it to such an extent that you don't give the doctors the clinical freedom to make a judgment. And I think yeah. there, there is a problem. I think, Raghav, it's a great point that given that the showpiece of your government in many ways is, is your work in the health space, has been your Mohalla clinic, you have not hesitated. The one thing that actually distinguished the Ahmadmi party from other political parties in the past is that you have not hesitated to fall back on experts. You have taken experts, non-political experts, and converted them into politicians, frankly. Now, in the middle of this crisis, you do not want to draw on politicians. You, who are otherwise so skeptical of the BJP, are suddenly quoting the ICMR, which has, by the way, changed its testing protocols more times than I can count in these two months. <coughs> so are you now First saying all, what ICMR... Uh, one minute. Are you now saying what ICMR says is gospel for you? Going forward, is ICMR no. the gospel for you? Well, when the previous speaker says that ICMR is not supreme, it's not infallible, I do agree it's not supreme. It's not infallible, but uh, I would certainly not imagine a situation where politicians, uh, ministers, and bureaucrats decide on these protocols. These protocols are best decided for the entire country by a team of experts, which comprise of doctors, which will comprise of epidemiologists, so on and so forth. That's one. Number two, when uh, you know the the uh, the point regarding formation of a multidisciplinary committee is raised, I would like to bring this to your notice that right from the onset of this pandemic, a team, a group of doctors, and uh, uh, you know uh, experts was put together by the honourable chief minister, headed by Dr. Serene of ILBS, who is one mm -hmm. of the most respected professionals in the country, and mm -hmm. that team. Uh, convenes uh, its meetings regularly and advises the government, advises the chief minister from time to time. We already have that system in place. And mm -hmm. those people are not necessarily sympathetic towards us. They're sympathetic towards the people of Delhi. Mm -hmm. And that team is working. Uh, and that, that team has done exceptional work. And under, under the leadership of Dr. Serene, we, 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 we've become the first state to even commence the plasma therapy trials. We've started plasma paresis, which has started showing excellent results. And the Drug Controller General of India has approved the uh, stage three of this trial, mm -hmm. subsequent to our submission of the results of the stage two trial. So I think a lot is being done. 
we are trying to do what we can uh, but you know to now ask us to not comply with what icmr says uh, to not comply with what the state disaster management authority says etc and the wisdom of the bureaucrats and politicians should take precedence over that i don't think that's entirely correct you, in a pandemic are you worried situation like are you this. worried just be honest okay people understand people understand their politicians when they're honest are you worried that there will be a panic response if the if the numbers of positive cases shoots high is this being well i fundamentally this, is this being done is this being I, done from a sense to from a need to say okay the numbers are under control i believe and i say this from my heart i am not saying this in the capacity of a politician that yeah. the only number that we should be looking at is the death number the death rate how many lives we've lost that is the yeah. only only number to look at and i i can say this that in delhi the death rate Yeah. uh is not as high as uh, in other parts of the country we're at 2.5% where the national death rate is 2.8% in mm-hmm. gujarat the rate is 6.4% in madhya pradesh is more than 5% in maharashtra it's almost 5% in bengal it's 5.4% so as far as the death rate is concerned in delhi in that sense we are uh, trying to you know manage things and ensure that we do not lose precious lives and more than 10000 people who had suffered from the covid 19 have recovered fully and have gone back home we are working on recovery we are working on saving lives i think the only critical number that one should look at in this stage in this phase of this pandemic is the number of lives lost okay let me get amrish in now amrish uh, yeah, I- yeah yeah i know raghav you have to go we'll take a set of last comments amrish go ahead yeah so uh you know i have no reason to doubt the sincerity of the government and its effort to try and uh manage the situation in delhi uh, uh, my only problem and the problem of my fraternity is with interference and impedance and i just like to state for one more time uh the absurdity of icmr regulations in the matter so uh if you are to follow the icmr guidelines and letter and spirit the chief minister would have a great deal of difficulty in getting tested because he let's say has uh, uh symptoms of influenza like illness but he's not in a containment zone okay mm-hmm. if you say that he's a frontline warrior then who isn't anybody who is going out to to mm-hmm. get you know to s- in search of a livelihood is a frontline warrior mm-hmm. he or she is interacting with hundreds of people you know mm-hmm. someone who's selling a uh, kirana is a frontline warrior mm-hmm. so everybody so i'm just saying that if you are to f- follow the 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 icmr guidelines and letter and spirit that's a problem so we shouldn't fetishize it we shouldn't mm-hmm. obsess about that and uh you know i i think it's i i do agree i completely agree with mr chatter that the only figure to be watched right now is the death rate and the case case fatality rate will entirely be a ratio between the number of positive cases yeah on other words number of infections you can't know the fatality rate yeah. that's right yes. so, you can't so know the fact, fatality rate without knowing the infection rate that's the that's, that's right so in, in right yeah yeah fact, Agha, once if, in yeah. fact if you test more so let's say if we say that our case fatality rate is better than whatever telangana or madhya pradesh you have to factor in how many tests they're doing so yeah. if, if you're testing in you know many times more than they are then obviously our case fatality rate will be okay. lesser than the other states I, I, but i'm i'm in complete agreement that we should be watching the case fatality i'll just let rama add a point here and raghav can wrap up this conversation because we are totally out of time rama if you'd like to add a question for raghav and he can answer both of them together so i want to ask him what is the preparedness of private hospitals yes and especially the point you raised right in the beginning do we have enough doctors and nurses without them being fatigued in the process of covid care yeah so so, um, so raghav i'll just add one question of my own because we didn't talk about private hospitals you haven't yet capped fees bombay has done it your government hasn't yet capped the fees of private hospitals you could work out some system to compensate them later for what they're spending i have personally interviewed a family that went to six hospitals one hospital asked them for 5 lakh rupees uh, you know these fees have not been capped mumbai tells us the real problem is a crisis of health workers that's question one question to amrish saying if icmr has to be fetishized arvind kejriwal our chief minister may not be able to get a test 
yeah so first of all as far as the capping of the uh, pricing uh, and the 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 rates uh, that are being offered by private hospitals is concerned i'll certainly take your feedback to the chief minister a petition to this effect is also pending before the delhi high court and all of us are waiting its uh, adjudication that's one number two as far as the uh, covid 19 test of the chief minister is concerned he falls fairly and squarely in point number 2 and point number 3 of the icmr guideline which i have on my phone right with me so he is clearly uh, somebody who does fall under that category and he will be and should be tested uh, lastly of course as far as the preparedness of private hospitals is concerned uh, private hospitals at this point in time are doing a spectacular job i have no hesitation in saying that private hospitals are playing a very significant role and are partnering with the government in that sense to deal with this pandemic barring a few there are always exceptions there have been some malpractices and affairious activities that some hospitals have undertaken some medical institutions have undertaken and action is being and will be taken against them barring those few all have been working very why are people why are people running working. why are people running from hospital well, i I'll, i'll come to that i'll come to that i'll come to so the preparedness as far as the preparedness of the hospital private hospitals is concerned there i am given to understand and from the data that is now reflecting on the mobile application launched by our government which is now accurate which wasn't entirely accurate a few days ago uh, shows that largely all private hospitals are working at an optimum capacity and therefore as far as the preparedness is concerned the one thing that the government of delhi now is emphasizing on is expanding the capacity of the private hospitals by attaching hotels uh, to these hospitals and we are in the process of identifying hotels and attaching those hotels with respective hospitals um as far as a, a few anecdotal cases that have come forward regarding those who've not been given in admission who have refused admission yes those cases have come forward uh, and as a result of which the government of delhi has now uh, you know come to a conclusion and the decision is now being implemented which is that we are deploying a medical professional at the reception of every private hospital so that nobody is refused admission and in the event that a particular hospital is running full capacity does not have a bed etc then it is the duty of that hospital to find a bed for that person whether in a private hospital or in a hotel okay. or in a hospital a government run hospital and transport that patient in an oxygen ambulance so i think all those things are now being put in place it's a dynamic situation nobody in this world no new york no italy's and no bombay's and delhi's of the world were prepared to be hit by a pandemic like this all of us are learning as we okay. go we are working tirelessly we are working 24/7 and as a result of which we see that uh, one of the the bravest fighters the the frontline workers the, the warrior uh, called arvind kejriwal himself is witnessing uh, you know uh, these symptoms so i okay. think we all now need to work closely do away with personal grudges and uh, political clashes and work as a team Okay I'm going to have to say thank you there of course we hope that the chief minister recovers we hope everybody who test positive recovers uh, I I just want to say Raghav that uh, I think we've seen uh, you're right the world struggling with this but the lockdown was meant to to prepare our health system the lockdown was meant to sort out our beds our health workers to get these systems into place uh, so I do hope you take this feedback from people like Rama Baru from people like Dr Sathwik uh, and you know from some of us who've been traveling Absolutely and so do take our feedback on the chin uh, we will leave it there amrish rama uh, raghav there's going to be a lot to discuss in the week and we'll get you ha uh, have you all back on thank you for, for your time uh, today thank you so much